CM Punk is no longer a part of AEW. He has been terminated for a cause, according to Tony Khan. And uh, he's done. Dave, what do we know? Uh, pretty much that's it. I mean, they um, they did their investigation. I give him credit for announcing it today before the show as opposed to waiting till Monday, um, which he could have done. But I guess that, uh, you know, I mean, um, he just felt like needed to get it out as soon as possible but they had video surveillance footage they already interviewed all the all the eyewitnesses uh they had a they the they had an outside investigation they interviewed a lot of the wrestlers who are not eyewitnesses just about uh the the basic situation of what was going on there and uh that was the um they had a the lawyers recommended he be gone whatever the disciplinary committee is, and I don't know who that is, recommended he'd be gone. And Tony Khan made the decision for him to be gone. So, I mean, I know people who were interviewed um, that were not there and it was about background, you know, just the history and things like that, along with the people who... They were uh, asked how things had changed over the last year and what they thought the solution to problems would be. Yep. A lot of uh, questions not related to the actual incident, Right. But to uh, all so of the it, incidents and everything that had happened over the right. past year so or so. So it was, it was, I mean, he got fired over what happened Sunday, but the, the, you know, the lawyers and everybody else, they talked about a lot more than Sunday. They talked about everything, the stuff that's come out, lots of stuff that hasn't come out. And, um, you know, I mean, should it have been sooner? With the benefit of hindsight, of course, it should have been a year ago. But, you know, hindsight... You know, as always, whatever. You know, I mean, when he came back, who was to say? You know what I mean? It's like, you know, you give him a chance. I mean, I, I'll tell you the thing that um, where I didn't have a good feeling was before it ever started, when he was coming back, when we knew he was coming back, the two times that he could, that he tried to, whatever it was, quit or whatever it was, threaten, whatever the story was. The first one was pretty serious. The second one was somewhat and I knew, like, when it was one time, I, I thought that was a pretty bad situation. When it was two, I thought, uh, you know, he's not changing. He didn't learn. When he did the promo, you know, it was kind of like, okay, whatever. The first promo when he came back. When he did the interview, you know, I mean, just one thing after another. Um, and, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't going to work. It didn't work. It was a disaster. Let's be serious. It was a disaster. And, you know, there's so much more to it than um, than has come out, you know. But a lot of the big stuff has. And the biggest thing was what happened on Sunday. And just can't ha keep having this stuff happen every, every second week. So the Collision Show opened with a speech from Tony where he basically said he had to make one of the toughest decisions of his career, terminated CM Punk from his contracts, by the way, which is what it said in the press release. I don't know if that was a... Typo, which I find hard to believe in that it typo. A, it would no, be, no, 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 no. I mean, he had he had he, he had, apparently I, had multiple contracts. I think he had multiple deals. You know, yeah, he had he was uh, he, he had a performer's contract and an employee contract, I believe. But um, I'm sure that will all be uh, clarified in the next 48 hours or so. He said the incident was regrettable. It endangered people backstage. That includes the production staff who put the show on every week. Innocent people who had nothing to do with it. He said, in 30 years of going to shows and four years of producing shows for AW, quote, never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. I don't feel anyone should feel that way at work. I don't think the people I work with should feel that way. I had to make a very difficult choice today. So there had been, uh, and I think you put it in The Observer, the stories about when the whole thing went down. You know, people had said that he lunged at Tony. It was probably uh, stronger than that. I, I think I think I was being, and that here's you know the funniest thing, and you know this better than anyone, is that throughout this whole ordeal, you and I were far too kind to him. I mean, that's the reality. We were far too kind to him. I always gave him the benefit of the doubt. I always tried to give his side while everyone didn't want to hear. You know that they they just wanted to go. Oh, you know you're you're after him and everything like that. 
But, okay, um, lunging was, again, far too kind. You know, I mean, if you saw the actual wording um, of what was said, lunging was, was, I was toning it down, you know. I mean, it was more than lunging. And there was also, I had heard that when he when he moved it towards Tony, whatever word you want to use, that uh, that monitors or like monitors that fell on yeah. Tony Khan, and I mean it was it was and whatever it was, I mean as you noted, there was security camera footage, so this yeah. was not something you know people were like, well, how come there wasn't security camera footage of the brawl? Well, it's because say, that they... was inside a locker room. They don't yeah. have cameras in the locker room. Yeah, this but was this the... was gorilla, and they had and, cameras and, all over the place. Well, I mean the gorilla, the setup. Um, is in at, at Wembley where they have that it's it's where they do um, interviews and things like that for soccer games football all the time and other sports and other entertainment so yes there's always cameras in that it was in a position where there's always cameras running yes so that was there there were this one had a lot of witnesses I mean the other one had some witnesses this one had a lot of witnesses well the thing with the first one was that there there were a small number of people in the room but as soon as everything happened then a whole bunch of people came into the room right right right, right. but there weren't like a whole bunch of people in the room when it began whereas with this one there were people all over the place and so and not just and not just wrestlers there were yes. production people you had and witnesses there were, there were all over the place were and unaf- it was filmed I mean this and, was and, a tough and, one to claim you know yeah, and, and there were unaffiliated people. I mean, I think the thing, probably the best description was the one, it's on. Uh, it's in The Observer. You know, I mean, we got the Jack Perry story, we got the Phil Brooks story. Okay, so they're both there. But the third story, and there's a couple of other stories, but the key one was the unaffiliated non-wrestler story. And, um, you know, I mean, that is what I would call, I, I don't know it's the most reliable, but it's... It's the, you know, it's neither it's neither party, but it's someone who saw it, and it's a non wrestler. It's not someone who has any uh, stakes in the game or part of either click or anything anything close to that. It's just someone who was there, working as many people were, and saw what happened. And um, there's actually more that may come out this week from other people that were also there, but uh, I'll get into that later this week probably. So before the show, I don't have a lot of details about what happened, but there was a meeting before the show, and uh, and everybody was told what happened. This was before collision tonight, and uh, Tony also went out before the crowd and told them. And the interesting thing is, is if you watch the Dynamite show on Wednesday, if you watch the TV version, I did not hear any chance for CM Punk. People that were there said that there were a couple that started that got booed down on Wednesday. Yeah. On Wednesday, and, and there on, were on uh, there were on um, before the show there were like that as well. Yes, there were um, a couple of chants that got booed down before the show started. Yeah, and there were a couple on on Collision as well. But in general, it was not like the fans hijacked the show or or you know anything of that. It was it was they, largely they, they, the they, same they, deal. They, they booed the Young Bucks, though. I mean, even they, they popped originally for them, um, that emotional pop to save FTR, but then, you know, they, they booed them and everything like that. And that was actually the one CM Punk chant when they came out that was not booed down. So, you know, but Tony uh, was booed, you know, um, in his live appearance. By the end, he kind of got the crowd with him. You know, he was, was talking about how I grew up here and, you know, I'm from here and, uh, you know, just... You know, we just came off like the biggest weekend. When he started talking about the biggest weekend in Wembley, he started getting cheered. But um, you know, they uh, the people knew. I mean, it was out, and um, you know, it, it was the city where you know. I don't know that I don't know that he gets booed anywhere else. But I mean, we'll see. I mean, I mean, there'll be people who will. There will be some people who will boo, but you know, whatever. I mean, it's neither. You know, it doesn't matter. It's it's turned out how it had to turn out i mean that's the basic situation i you know i mean there's a lot of interesting timing to this football season starting the ratings are going to go down you know i mean i I think that uh, there there are absolutely you know many people within AEW that believe that he was trying to get out oh i i I, I can't say because I cannot get into his brain, but yes, there were a lot of people who thought ever since uh, 
that contract was signed with uh, the Young Bucks and Page and everything, that he wanted out and he was going to, that something was going to happen. There were people who thought that because the ratings for Collision were so much lower than Dynamite, which we knew going in they would be, and I'm not blaming that on anyone, but, you know, the idea that, I, I think the one that was the bad one was the week when um, Adam Cole and MJF came and the ratings skyrocketed up, and then when they weren't back, they went back down to that, you know, below 500,000 level from the 700 plus you know, level with 0.27 to like 0.17, 0.16 level, which was a big, big drop. And I mean, it said, you know, I mean, that was the one that established that Max and Adam Cole are the big, the big draws in the company. And, um, you know, whatever that. And I mean, like, let's face it, two weeks from now or a week from now when um, college football is hard and heavy and there's multiple games going against them. I mean, it didn't, you know. It was going down, no matter what, with him. And it's going to go down more without him. He's a draw. He's the biggest draw. He was the biggest draw on that brand, aside from the week that Max and Adam Cole were on. I mean, you can't take that away from him. But, um, yeah, you know, it was uh, from a timing standpoint. Um, I don't know that he's that clever, but I don't know that he's not, you know. Um, and, you know, that's, you know, there's this. But, you know, the way the whole thing went down, I mean... It was, you know, I mean, as more and more people talk about it that saw it, uh, the situation has painted, you know, him worse. Now, have you heard anything about Ace Steel? I've heard nothing about Ace Steel. Okay, neither have I. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.